Next time you're in a plane, look out the window. You'll see evidence of our species everywhere. You'll see towns and cities. You'll see roads and superhighways. You'll see farmlands where there used to be forests. And if you look at night, you'll see lights everywhere. No other species can do what we can do. We tend to take this for granted because it's always been like this during our lifetime. But what is it that actually makes us so different? This is actually a very tricky question to answer. And at the moment, there exists no universally agreed answer to it. So let's zoom back in time and take a bird's eye view of the remarkable history of our remarkable species in order to try and get an answer to it. Several million years ago, a number of ape-like species roamed parts of the planet. Now, we're interested in them because they were our ancestors, but frankly, they weren't doing anything that strange. They were behaving like most species. Like most species, they, they roamed around in small groups, picking up the food and resources they needed from their environment. Some of them even used tools, but even that wasn't really weird because quite a lot of other species used tools, including quite a lot of species of birds. Let's zoom forward to somewhere between 200 and 100,000 years ago. Now, these ape-like species have evolved, and amongst them there has appeared our own species, Homo sapiens, in Africa. But at first, even Homo sapiens is not behaving that strangely. Then, we start noticing some odd things. They start entering new environments, and some of them start leaving Africa. They start building houses, they start building a huge range of new types of tools, and some of them even start tailoring clothing. And eventually, they spread all around planet Earth, to all the continents apart from Antarctica. Now, this was very fast changed by evolutionary standards. What was it that made our ancestors so creative? To get a sense of how strange we are as a, as a species, remember that life has been evolving on this planet for almost four billion years. Yet no species has shown the strange behavior that we show or the creativity we've shown. Take Namdaemun Market here in Seoul in South Korea. Look at the amount of stuff that's just going on behind me. What's going on? Well, one thing that I think is going on is that we humans have a peculiarly efficient method of communication. Now, in a sense, all animals communicate. Uh, birds sing, bees dance, ants even share special chemicals that they call pheromones to communicate. But the amount of information they can share is very limited and it soon gets forgotten. We humans have developed a peculiarly powerful form of communication that we call language. What it means is that we can share with each other information with great precision and in great volume so that it gets stored in the collective memory. And that means that ideas do not die when the individual who holds them dies. Instead, they get stored in the collective memory and passed on from generation to generation and they can accumulate over time. And that's a process, as we all know, that has no limit to it. So we humans uniquely are a species that can learn not just as individuals, but collectively. Isn't that what you're doing right now? This ability to learn collectively and to keep accumulating, accumulating information from generation to generation is unique to humans. It's uniquely powerful. And it explains why we're able to keep moving into different environments. And it explains why we're able to keep finding new ways of harnessing the Earth's resources. That's why collective learning counts as the sixth major threshold of increasing complexity in this course. It's what defines us as a species. It explains why we're able to feed seven billion humans in societies of staggering complexity. And it also explains why we humans are the first species in four billion years to have this much power over the biosphere.